Object-Oriented Programming, Wikipedia Article Audio Object-Oriented Programming is a programming paradigm based on the concept of objects, which may contain data, in the form of fields, often known as attributes, and code, in the form of procedures, often known as methods. A feature of objects is that an object's procedures can access and often modify the data fields of the object with which they are associated. In OOP, computer programs are designed by making them out of objects that interact with one another. There is significant diversity of OOP languages, but the most popular ones are class-based, meaning that objects are instances of classes which typically also determine their type. Features Shared with non-OLP predecessor languages Objects and classes Class-based VS prototype-based Dynamic dispatch slash message passing Encapsulation Composition, inheritance and delegation Polymorphism Open Recursion History OLP Languages OLP in Dynamic Languages OLP in a Network Protocol Design Patterns Inheritance and Behavioral Subtyping Gang of Four Design Patterns Object Orientation and Databases Real-World Modeling and Relationships OLP and Control Flow Responsibility versus Data-Driven Design Solid and Grasp Guidelines Criticism Formal Semantics Systems Modeling Languages Many of the most widely used programming languages are multi-paradigm programming languages that support object-oriented programming to a greater or lesser degree, typically in combination with imperative, procedural programming. Significant object-oriented languages include Java, C++, C Sharp, Python, PHP, Ruby, Perl, Object Pascal, Objective-C, Dart, Swift, Scala, Common Lisp, and Smalltalk. Object-oriented programming uses objects, but not all of the associated techniques and structures are supported directly in languages that claim to support OLP. The features listed below are, however, common among languages considered strongly class and object-oriented with notable exceptions mentioned. Modular programming support provides the ability to group procedures into files and modules for organizational purposes. Modules are namespaced so identifiers in one module will not be accidentally confused with a procedure or variable sharing the same name in another file or module. Languages that support object-oriented programming typically use inheritance for code reuse and extensibility in the form of either classes or prototypes. Those that use classes support two main concepts. Objects sometimes correspond to things found in the real world. For example, a graphics program may have objects such as circle, square, menu. An online shopping system might have objects such as shopping cart, customer, and product. Sometimes objects represent more abstract entities, like an object that represents an open file, or an object that provides the service of translating measurements from U.S. customary to metric. Each object is said to be an instance of a particular class. Procedures in object-oriented programming are known as methods, variables are also known as fields, members, attributes, or properties. This leads to the following terms. 
Objects are accessed somewhat like variables with complex internal structure, and in many languages are effectively pointers, serving as actual references to a single instance of said object in memory within a heap or stack. They provide a layer of abstraction which can be used to separate internal from external code. External code can use an object by calling a specific instance method with a certain set of input parameters, read an instance variable, or write to an instance variable. Objects are created by calling a special type of method in the class known as a constructor. A program may create many instances of the same class as it runs, which operate independently. This is an easy way for the same procedures to be used on different sets of data. Object-oriented programming that uses classes is sometimes called class-based programming, while prototype-based programming does not typically use classes. As a result, a significantly different yet analogous terminology is used to define the concepts of object and instance. In some languages classes and objects can be composed using other concepts like traits and mixins. In class-based languages the classes are defined beforehand and the objects are instantiated based on the classes. If two objects apple and orange are instantiated from the class fruit, they are inherently fruits and it is guaranteed that you may handle them in the same way e.g. a programmer can expect the existence of the same attributes such as color or sugar content or is ripe. In prototype-based languages the objects are the primary entities. No classes even exist. The prototype of an object is just another object to which the object is linked. Every object has one prototype link. New objects can be created based on already existing objects chosen as their prototype. You may call two different objects apple and orange a fruit, if the object fruit exists, and both apple and orange have fruit as their prototype. The idea of the fruit class doesn't exist explicitly, but as the equivalence class of the objects sharing the same prototype. The attributes and methods of the prototype are delegated to all the objects of the equivalence class defined by this prototype. The attributes and methods owned individually by the object may not be shared by other objects of the same equivalence class, e.g. the attributes sugar content may be unexpectedly not present in Apple. Only single inheritance can be implemented through the prototype. It is the responsibility of the object, not any external code, to select the procedural code to execute in response to a method call, typically by looking up the method at runtime in a table associated with the object. This feature is known as dynamic dispatch, and distinguishes an object from an abstract data type, which has a fixed implementation of the operations for all instances. If there are multiple methods that might be run for a given name, it is known as multiple dispatch. A method call is also known as message passing. It is conceptualized as a message being passed to the object for dispatch. Encapsulation is an object-oriented programming concept that binds together the data and functions that manipulate the data and that keeps both safe from outside interference and misuse. Data encapsulation led to the important OOP concept of data hiding. If a class does not allow calling code to access internal object data and permits access through methods only, this is a strong form of abstraction or information hiding known as encapsulation. Some languages let classes enforce access restrictions explicitly, for example denoting internal data with the private keyword and designating methods intended for use by code outside the class with the public keyword. Methods may also be designed public, private, or intermediate levels such as protected. In other languages this is enforced only by convention. 
Encapsulation prevents external code from being concerned with the internal workings of an object. This facilitates code refactoring, for example allowing the author of the class to change how objects of that class represent their data internally without changing any external code. It also encourages programmers to put all the code that is concerned with a certain set of data in the same class, which organizes it for easy comprehension by other programmers. Encapsulation is a technique that encourages decoupling. Objects can contain other objects in their instance variables, this is known as object composition. For example, an object in the employee class might contain an object in the address class, in addition to its own instance variables like first name and position. Object composition is used to represent has a relationships, every employee has an address, so every employee object has a place to store an address object. Languages that support classes almost always support inheritance. This allows classes to be arranged in a hierarchy that represents as a type of relationships. For example, class employee might inherit from class person. All the data and methods available to the parent class also appear in the child class with the same names. For example, class person might define variables first name and last name with method make full name. These will also be available in class employee, which might add the variables position and salary. This technique allows easy reuse of the same procedures and data definitions, in addition to potentially mirroring real-world relationships in an intuitive way. Rather than utilizing database tables and programming subroutines, the developer utilizes objects the user may be more familiar with objects from their application domain. Subclasses can override the methods defined by superclasses. Multiple inheritance is allowed in some languages, though this can make resolving overrides complicated. Some languages have special support for mixins, though in any language with multiple inheritance, a mixin is simply a class that does not represent an is a type of relationship. Mixins are typically used to add the same methods to multiple classes. For example, class Unicode conversion mixin might provide a method Unicode to ASCII when included in class file reader and class web page scraper, which don't share a common parent. Abstract classes cannot be instantiated into objects they exist only for the purpose of inheritance into other concrete classes which can be instantiated. In Java, the final keyword can be used to prevent a class from being subclassed. The doctrine of composition over inheritance advocates implementing has a relationships using composition instead of inheritance. For example, instead of inheriting from class person, Class employee could give each employee object an internal person object, which it then has the opportunity to hide from external code even if class person has many public attributes or methods. Some languages, like Go do not support inheritance at all. The open slash closed principle advocates that classes and functions should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Delegation is another language feature that can be used as an alternative to inheritance. Subtyping, a form of polymorphism, is when calling code can be agnostic as to whether an object belongs to a parent class or one of its descendants. For example, a function might call make full name on an object, which will work whether the object is of class person or class employee. This is another type of abstraction which simplifies code external to the class hierarchy and enables strong separation of concerns. In languages that support open recursion, object methods can call other methods on the same object, 
typically using a special variable or keyword called this OR self. This variable is late bound, it allows a method defined in one class to invoke another method that is defined later, in some subclass thereof. Terminology invoking objects and oriented in the modern sense of object-oriented programming made its first appearance at MIT in the late 1950s and early 1960s. In the environment of the Artificial Intelligence Group, as early as 1960, object could refer to identified items with properties. Alan Kay was later to cite a detailed understanding of LISP internals as a strong influence on his thinking in 1966. Another early MIT example was Sketchpad created by Yvonne Sutherland in 1960. 61. In the glossary of the 1963 technical report based on his dissertation about Sketchpad, Sutherland defined notions of object and instance albeit specialized to graphical interaction. Also, an MIT ALGOL version, AED0, established a direct link between data structures and procedures, prefiguring what were later termed messages, methods, and member functions. The formal programming concept of objects was introduced in the mid-1960s with Simula 67, a major revision of Simula I, a programming language designed for discrete event simulation, created by OLE Johan Dahl and Kristen Nygaard of the Norwegian Computing Center in Oslo. Simula 67 was influenced by SimScript and CAR. Tony Hors proposed record classes. Simula introduced the notion of classes and instances or objects as part of an explicit programming paradigm. The language also used automatic garbage collection that had been invented earlier for the functional programming language Lisp. Simula was used for physical modeling, such as models to study and improve the movement of ships and their content through cargo ports. The ideas of Simula 67 influenced many later languages, including Smalltalk, derivatives of Lisp, Object Pascal, and C++. The Smalltalk language, which was developed at Xerox PARC in the 1970s, introduced the term object-oriented programming to represent the pervasive use of objects and messages as the basis for computation. Smalltalk creators were influenced by the ideas introduced in Simula 67, but Smalltalk was designed to be a fully dynamic system in which classes could be created and modified dynamically rather than statically as in Simula 67. Smalltalk and with it OLP were introduced to a wider audience by the August 1981 issue of Byte magazine. In the 1970s, Kay's Smalltalk work had influenced the Lisp community to incorporate object-based techniques that were introduced to developers via the Lisp machine. Experimentation with various extensions to Lisp eventually led to the common Lisp object system, which integrates functional programming and object-oriented programming and allows extension via a meta-object protocol. In the 1980s, there were a few attempts to design processor architectures that included hardware support for objects in memory but these were not successful. Examples include the Intel IAPX 432 and the Lin Smart Recursive. Classes The definitions for the data format and available procedures for a given type or class of object, may also contain data and procedures themselves i.e. classes contain the data members and member functions, objects. Instances of classes Class variables Belong to the class as a whole, there is only one copy of each one, instance variables or attributes. Data that belongs to individual objects, every object has its own copy of each one, member variables. 
refers to both the class and instance variables that are defined by a particular class, class methods, belong to the class as a whole and have access only to class variables and inputs from the procedure call, instance methods, belong to individual objects, and have access to instance variables for the specific object they are called on, inputs, and class variables. Languages called pure OO languages, because everything in them is treated consistently as an object, from primitives such as characters and punctuation, all the way up to whole classes, prototypes, blocks, modules, etc. They were designed specifically to facilitate, even in force, OO methods. Examples, Python, Ruby, Scala, Smalltalk, Eiffel, Emerald, Jade, Self, languages designed mainly for OO programming, but with some procedural elements. Examples, Java, C++, C Sharp, Delphi slash Object Pascal, VB.net, languages that are historically procedural languages, but have been extended with some OO features. Examples, PHP, Perl, Visual Basic, MATLAB, COBOL 2002, Fortran 2003, ABAP, ADA 95, Pascal, languages with most of the features of objects, but in a distinctly original form. Examples, Oberon languages with abstract data type support which may be used to resemble OO programming, but without all features of object orientation. This includes object-based and prototype-based languages. Examples, JavaScript, Lua, Modula 2, CLU, chameleon languages that support multiple paradigms, including OO. TCL stands out among these for TCLOO, a hybrid object system that supports both prototype-based programming and class-based OO. Fields defining the data values that form messages, such as their length, code point, and data values, objects and collections of objects similar to what would be found in a small talk program for messages and parameters. Managers similar to as slash 400 objects, such as a directory to files and files consisting of metadata and records. Managers conceptually provide memory and processing resources for their contained objects, a client or server consisting of all the managers necessary to implement a full processing environment, supporting such aspects as directory services, security, and concurrency control. Creational Patterns, Factory Method Pattern, Abstract Factory Pattern, Singleton Pattern, Builder Pattern, Prototype Pattern, Structural Patterns, Adapter Pattern, Bridge Pattern, Composite Pattern, Decorator Pattern, Facade Pattern, Flyweight Pattern, Proxy Pattern, Behavioral Patterns, Chain of Responsibility Pattern, Command Pattern, Interpreter Pattern, Iterator Pattern, Mediator Pattern, Memento Pattern, Observer Pattern, State Pattern, Strategy Pattern, Template Method Pattern, Visitor Pattern. Single Responsibility Principle, Open Slash Closed Principle, Liskov Substitution Principle, Interface Segregation Principle, Dependency Inversion Principle. CO Algebraic Data Types, Abstract Data Types allow the definition of modules but these do not support dynamic dispatch, recursive types, encapsulated state, inheritance. Records are basis for understanding objects if function literals can be stored in fields, but the actual calculi need be considerably more complex to incorporate essential features of OOP. Several extensions of System F, 
that deal with mutable objects have been studied, these allow both subtype polymorphism and parametric polymorphism. In 1985, Bertrand Meyer produced the first design of the Eiffel language. Focused on software quality, Eiffel is among the purely object-oriented languages, but differs in the sense that the language itself is not only a programming language, but a notation supporting the entire software life cycle. Meyer described the Eiffel software development method based on a small number of key ideas from software engineering and computer science, in object-oriented software construction. Essential to the quality focus of Eiffel is Meyer's reliability mechanism, designed by contract, which is an integral part of both the method and language. Object-oriented programming developed as the dominant programming methodology in the early and mid-1990s when programming languages supporting the techniques became widely available. These included Visual Fox Pro 3.0, C++, and Delphi. Its dominance was further enhanced by the rising popularity of graphical user interfaces which rely heavily upon object-oriented programming techniques. An example of a closely related dynamic GUI library and OOP language can be found in the COCO frameworks on Mac OS X, written in Objective-C, an object-oriented, dynamic messaging extension to C based on Smalltalk. OOP toolkits also enhanced the popularity of event-driven programming. At FZ, Rich, Nick Osworth and his colleagues had also been investigating such topics as data abstraction and modular programming. Modula 2 included both, and their succeeding design, Oberon, included a distinctive approach to object orientation, classes, and such. Object-oriented features have been added to many previously existing languages, including Ada, BASIC, Fortran, Pascal, and COBOL. Adding these features to languages that were not initially designed for them often led to problems with compatibility and maintainability of code. More recently, a number of languages have emerged that are primarily object-oriented, but that are also compatible with procedural methodology. Two such languages are Python and Ruby. Probably the most commercially important recent object-oriented languages are Java, developed by Sun Microsystems, as well as C-Sharp and Visual Basic.net, both designed for Microsoft's .NET platform. Each of these two frameworks shows, in its own way, the benefit of using OOP by creating an abstraction from implementation. VB.NET and C Sharp support cross language inheritance, allowing classes defined in one language to subclass classes defined in the other language. Simula is generally accepted as being the first language with the primary features of an object oriented language. It was created for making simulation programs, in which what came to be called objects were the most important information representation. Smalltalk is another early example, and the one with which much of the theory of OOP was developed. Concerning the degree of object orientation, the following distinctions can be made. In recent years, Object-oriented programming has become especially popular in dynamic programming languages. Python, PowerShell, Ruby and Groovy are dynamic languages built on OOP principles, while Perl and PHP have been adding object-oriented features since Perl 5 and PHP 4, and Cold Fusion since version 6. The document object model of HTML, XHTML, and XML documents on the Internet has bindings to the popular JavaScript slash ECMAScript language. JavaScript is perhaps the best known prototype-based programming language, 
which employs cloning from prototypes rather than inheriting from a class. Another scripting language that takes this approach is Lua. The messages that flow between computers to request services in a client-server environment can be designed as the linearizations of objects defined by class objects known to both the client and the server. For example, a simple linearized object would consist of a length field, a code point identifying the class, and a data value. A more complex example would be a command consisting of the length and code point of the command and values consisting of linearized objects representing the command's parameters. Each such command must be directed by the server to an object whose class recognizes the command and is able to provide the requested service. Clients and servers are best modeled as complex object-oriented structures. Distributed data management architecture took this approach and used class objects to define objects at four levels of a formal hierarchy. The initial version of DDM defined distributed file services. It was later extended to be the foundation of distributed relational database architecture. Challenges of object-oriented design are addressed by several methodologies. Most common is known as the design patterns codified by Gamma ETAL. More broadly, the term design patterns can be used to refer to any general, repeatable solution to a commonly occurring problem in software design. Some of these commonly occurring problems have implications and solutions particular to object-oriented development. It is intuitive to assume that inheritance creates a semantic is a relationship, and thus to infer that objects instantiated from subclasses can always be safely used instead of those instantiated from the superclass. This intuition is unfortunately false in most OOP languages, in particular in all those that allow mutable objects. Subtype polymorphism as enforced by the type checker in OOP languages cannot guarantee behavioral subtyping in any context. Behavioral subtyping is undecidable in general, so it cannot be implemented by a program. Class or object hierarchies must be carefully designed, considering possible incorrect uses that cannot be detected syntactically. This issue is known as the Liskov substitution principle. Design patterns, elements of reusable object-oriented software is an influential book published in 1995 by Eric Gamma, Richard Helm, Ralph Johnson and John V. Lesides, often referred to humorously as the Gang of Four. Along with exploring the capabilities and pitfalls of object-oriented programming, it describes 23 common programming problems and patterns for solving them. As of April 2007, the book was in its 36th printing. The book describes the following patterns. Both object-oriented programming and relational database management systems are extremely common in software today. Since relational databases don't store objects directly, there is a general need to bridge the two worlds. The problem of bridging object-oriented programming accesses and data patterns with relational databases is known as object-relational impedance mismatch. There are a number of approaches to cope with this problem, but no general solution without downsides. One of the most common approaches is object-relational mapping, as found in IDE languages such as Visual Fox Pro and libraries such as Java Data Objects and Ruby on Rails Active Record. There are also object databases that can be used to replace RDBMSs, but these have not been as technically and commercially successful as RDBMSs. OOP can be used to associate real world objects and processes with digital counterparts. However, not everyone agrees that OOP facilitates direct real-world mapping or that real-world mapping is even a worthy goal, 
Bertrand Meyer argues in object-oriented software construction that a program is not a model of the world but a model of some part of the world, reality is a cousin twice removed. At the same time, some principal limitations of OOP have been noted. For example, the circle ellipse problem is difficult to handle using OOP's concept of inheritance. However, Nick Osworth said of OOP in his paper, Good Ideas Through the Looking Glass, this paradigm closely reflects the structure of systems in the real world, and it is therefore well suited to model complex systems with complex behaviors. Steve Yeg and others noted that natural languages lack the OOP approach of strictly prioritizing things before actions. This problem may cause OOP to suffer more convoluted solutions than procedural programming. OOP was developed to increase the reusability and maintainability of source code. Transparent representation of the control flow had no priority and was meant to be handled by a compiler. With the increasing relevance of parallel hardware and multi-threaded coding, developing transparent control flow becomes more important, something hard to achieve with OOP. Responsibility-driven design defines classes in terms of a contract, that is, a class should be defined around a responsibility and the information that it shares. This is contrasted by Wirf Sprock and Wilkerson with data-driven design, where classes are defined around the data structures that must be held. The authors hold that responsibility-driven design is preferable. SOLID is a mnemonic invented by Michael Feathers that stands for and advocates five programming practices. GRASP is another set of guidelines advocated by Craig Larman. The OOP paradigm has been criticized for a number of reasons, including not meeting its stated goals of reusability and modularity, and for overemphasizing one aspect of software design and modeling at the expense of other important aspects. Luca Cardelli has claimed that OOP code is intrinsically less efficient than procedural code, that OOP can take longer to compile, and that OOP languages have extremely poor modularity properties with respect to class extension and modification, and tend to be extremely complex. The latter point is reiterated by Joe Armstrong, the principal inventor of Erlang, who is quoted as saying, the problem with object-oriented languages is they've got all this implicit environment that they carry around with them. You wanted a banana but what you got was a gorilla holding the banana and the entire jungle. A study by Potok ETAL has shown no significant difference in productivity between OOP and procedural approaches. Christopher J. Date stated that critical comparison of OOP to other technologies, relational in particular, is difficult because of lack of an agreed-upon and rigorous definition of OOP, however, Date and Darwin have proposed a theoretical foundation on OOP that uses OOP as a kind of customizable type system to support RDBMS. In an article Lawrence Krubner claimed that compared to other languages OOP languages have no unique strengths, and inflict a heavy burden of unneeded complexity. Alexander Stepanov compares object orientation unfavorably to generic programming. I find OOP technically unsound. It attempts to decompose the world in terms of interfaces that vary on a single type. To deal with the real problems you need multi-sorted algebras. Families of interfaces that span multiple types. I find OOP philosophically unsound. It claims that everything is an object. Even if it is true it is not very interesting. Saying that everything is an object is saying nothing at all. Paul Graham has suggested that OOP's popularity within large companies is due to large groups of mediocre programmers. 
According to Graham, the discipline imposed by OOP prevents any one programmer from doing too much damage. Steve Yeg noted that, as opposed to functional programming, object-oriented programming puts the nouns first and foremost. Why would you go to such lengths to put one part of speech on a pedestal? Why should one kind of concept take precedence over another? It's not as if OLP has suddenly made verbs less important in the way we actually think. It's a strangely skewed perspective. Rich Hickey, creator of Clojure, described object systems as overly simplistic models of the real world. He emphasized the inability of OLP to model time properly, which is getting increasingly problematic as software systems become more concurrent. Eric S. Raymond, a Unix programmer and open-source software advocate, has been critical of claims that present object-oriented programming is the one true solution, and has written that object-oriented programming languages tend to encourage thickly layered programs that destroy transparency. Raymond compares this unfavorably to the approach taken with Unix and the C programming language. Rob Pike a programmer involved in the creation of UTF-8 and Go, has called object-oriented programming the Roman numerals of computing and has said that OLP languages frequently shift the focus from data structures and algorithms to types. Furthermore, he cites an instance of a Java professor whose idiomatic solution to a problem was to create six new classes, rather than to simply use a lookup table. Objects are the runtime entities in an object-oriented system. They may represent a person, a place, a bank account, a table of data, or any item that the program has to handle. There have been several attempts at formalizing the concepts used in object-oriented programming. The following concepts and constructs have been used as interpretations of OLP concepts. Attempts to find a consensus definition or theory behind objects have not proven very successful for formal definitions of many OLP concepts and constructs, and often diverge widely. For example, some definitions focus on mental activities, and some on program structuring. One of the simpler definitions is that OLP is the act of using map data structures or arrays that can contain functions and pointers to other maps, all with some syntactic and scoping sugar on top. Inheritance can be performed by cloning the maps.